Today, in this video, we're gonna learn how to collect payments from our e-commerce website using Stripe. More precisely, we're gonna look at how to use Stripe Checkout to easily and securely accept payments from our e-commerce website built with the Next.js framework. And as you will see, it will only take a few minutes of your time to sell your products online and more importantly, get paid. So without further ado, let's dive into it. If you are new here, like and subscribe to support the channel and check out my React.js program if you like to learn how to build your own production-ready React applications and become a React developer. You can find the link in the description below. Processing payment is an essential part of any e-commerce website. Stripe is a toolkit and an API used by millions of businesses to accept payments, manage customers, handle recurring subscriptions, and more. It is very popular among startups because it is developer friendly. And as we'll see, it only takes a few steps to collect payments from your React or Next.js applications using the Stripe API and toolkit. So in today's video, we're gonna use our existing Next.js website and focus on the Stripe integration from the front end side to the back end. I'm not going to show you how to build a Next.js e-commerce website from scratch but you can find the source card in the description below. So check this out and let me know in the comments if you'd like me to create a video on how to build such an e-commerce website from scratch using Next.js. And if you'd like to learn more about Next.js, check out my free course on alterclass.io. I will add the link to this course in the description below as well. So check this out. So in this video, we're gonna cover how to set up our Stripe account and our Next.js app to collect payments create the products we want to sell in the Stripe dashboard. And when the user wants to buy our products, we're gonna learn how to create a checkout session from our Next.js API and redirect the user to the Stripe checkout page from our user interface. So we can collect the payment details, such as the user email address and the card's details. And finally, we're gonna learn how to handle Stripe events using webhooks and our Next.js API. So let's go. But before we get started, make sure to install Stripe and the Stripe.js library into your Next.js project. Then you're gonna need to create an account on stripe.com. But don't worry, it's entirely free. You don't have to provide your credit cards or anything. You just need to click the sign in button at the top and you should be good to go. Once you are registered, you should be redirected to your Stripe dashboard. So the first thing we're gonna need here is our Stripe API keys in order to create the Stripe API. So click on the developer's link in the sidebar and click API keys. As you can see here, we have two API keys. The first one is the publishable key that you need to identify your account with Stripe. The second one is the secret key. So be careful with this one you should keep it confidential and don't publish it on your GitHub repository, for example. Also note that here we are using Stripe in test mode, meaning that everything we are going to do is for demonstration only and can be used to test our applications and our payment flow end-to-end. -end. So we can make sure everything is working fine before deploying to productions. By the way, when you turn on the live mode in Stripe, you will get two new API keys. So make sure to use the right keys for the right environment. All right, so copy your keys and go back to your editor. Inside your Next.js project, create a new file called .env.local and create your first environment variable and call it next public Stripe publishable key. Copy your values here and then create the second variable for the secret key. Call it Stripe secret key. So before going further into our Next.js application, go back to your Stripe dashboard as we create the projects we want to sell. Here, click on products and add product. Then type in the name of your first product, upload an image for your product, and set the price and currency. Then click save and add more to add the second product. So same thing here, we type in the name, we upload an image, we set the currency and the price, and we save and add more projects to it. So add as many projects as you want to sell here. 
And when you are done creating all your projects, make sure to copy the API ID for all your products. We're going to use this ID from within our application and pass it to Stripe with our API requests to tell Stripe which product we want to buy using this product ID. So now we are all set, so go back to your code editor. And the first thing we're going to need is to load Stripe into our Next.js application. So inside a get Stripe file, we're going to first load the loading wrapper load Stripe from the Stripe.js library. And then we're going to create a variable to store the Stripe instance we are about to retrieve. For that, create a new function, get Stripe. And then inside that function, make sure that we don't have already loaded Stripe. In that case, retrieve the Stripe instance by calling load Stripe and by passing your Stripe publishable key using the environment variable we have created earlier. And then return the Stripe instance from that function. Finally, don't forget to export as default the get Stripe function. All right, now before using that function from within our React components, we're going to create the API endpoints we need in order to create a Striped checkout session or retrieve the data from a checkout session using its session ID. So start by creating a new folder named API under the pages folder. And then within that folder, create another folder called checkout sessions and create a file named index.js. So inside that file, we're going to create the API endpoint we need to create a checkout sessions. So what's great about Next.js is that we don't have to create and set up a new Node.js server in order to create those API endpoints. We can do everything inside the same project and Next.js will create and serve those API endpoints for us. Now, inside that file, start by importing the Stripe module from Stripe and then instantiate a new Stripe instance using your secret key from the environment variable. Next, create an async handler function and export it as default. These handler functions accept two arguments, the HTTP request and the HTTP response. This is the only function that we need in order to create an API endpoint with Next.js. So within that function, make sure that the request that we're receiving is a post request. Otherwise, return a 4 or 5 status code to the client that initiated that request. Then, if we have a post request, we will handle everything inside a try catch block. And if you catch an error, we return a 500 status code to the client. Otherwise, we're going to create our checkout session using Stripe and pass inside that function all the options of the session. Here, we're going to set the mode to payment because that's what we want to do. Then we're going to enable card as the only payment method, but check out the Stripe documentation if you want to enable more payment methods. Then we're going to pass all the line items for that session, which are all the items inside the shopping cards of the user. And we're going to get that from the request body. We'll see later from our user interface how to pass those items inside that query. And finally, we need to specify a success URL that will be used by Stripe to redirect the user once its payment has been successful. So here we're going to use slash success and we're going to pass the current checkout session ID as a query parameter. And we also need to specify the console URL if the user canceled the payment from the Stripe checkout session. So here we're going to redirect him to its shopping cart page. After we have created and retrieved our session, we're going to return it to the client. And that's it for this API endpoint. Now let's create a second API endpoint to retrieve a checkout session using a session ID. So create a new file inside the checkout session folder and call it ID wrap inside square brackets.js. Now inside that file, once again, load Stripe and use your Stripe secret key to create a new instance. Again, export as default an async handler function. And within that function, retrieve the ID from the query parameter of the request, use a try catch block, and if something goes wrong, return a 500 status code to the client. Then check the value of the ID to make sure that it starts with CS underscore, otherwise we throw an error. Then if the ID is valid, we retrieve the checkout session using Stripe by passing the session ID and we return it to the client. All right, so we're done with our API endpoint. So let's keep going with the user interface. So now inside our shopping cart page, we're going to implement a function called redirect to checkout that's being called when the user click on the button from this page to pay for its order. So inside that function, we're going to start by creating the Stripe checkout session 
using Axios to perform a post request to our slash API slash checkout session API endpoint we just created earlier. Once we get the response from the server, we can retrieve from the response data object the ID of the newly created checkout session. And for our post request to be successful, we need to pass the line items to the body of the request. So here I'm iterating over the items inside the shopping cart of the user. And for each item, I'm just passing its ID and the quantity. Not that the key for the ID is actually named price and not ID. So when we have created this checkout session successfully, we can redirect the user to the checkout page. So get stripe from our get stripe method we have created at the beginning of this video. And then use stripe.redirect to checkout, passing the session ID using the ID retrieved from our post request in order to redirect the user to the checkout page. And that's it. Now the user should be able to go to the Stripe checkout page and from within the checkout page, you can then pay for the goods using the form provided by Stripe. So now that we are able to create a checkout session and accept payments using the Stripe checkout page, we still need to implement one more thing. Indeed, as all the payment is handled by Stripe outside of our application, we need to implement a webhook in order to listen to a Stripe event to know when a payment has been successfully processed by Stripe. For that, we need to go back to our Stripe dashboard and create a webhook endpoint. So from within your dashboard, click on the developer's link and then webhooks. From here, click on add endpoint and enter the URL of your application and add slash API slash webhook, which is actually the API endpoint from our Next.js application we are about to create just after that. Then down below, select the event we want to listen to and choose checkout.session.completed, which is the event that Stripe will send to the endpoint URL above once a session has been completed successfully. In other words, when a user has successfully paid its order. So then click add endpoint to actually create this endpoint. From here, copy the signing secret for this webhook that we're going to need inside our Next.js application. So now go back to your application and create a new environment variable called Stripe webhook secret and pass the value you just copied. Next, create a new folder under the API folder and call it webhook. Inside that folder, create a new file named index.js. And as with our checkout API endpoint, we're going to use that file to implement our webhook API endpoint. So start by importing the Stripe module from Stripe. And here I'm also importing a function called buffer from micro, which is an NPM package, which provide HTTP microservices. And we're going to use that package in order to get the raw data from the body of the HTTP request. So make sure to import this package using NPM install micro. Then create a new Stripe instance and export a config object with the following key value pair in order to tell Next.js not to parse the body of the request because we need the raw data of that body in order to verify the webhook event signature. This is important because we need to make sure that the webhook event was actually sent by Stripe and not by a malicious third party. Next, as usual, export a default async handler function, check that we receive a post request, otherwise return a 4 or 5 status code and then create a new variable named event to store the webhook event data. Then, as usual, use a try catch block, and if something goes wrong, return a 400 status code to the client. So the first thing we need to do is to retrieve the event by verifying the signature using the raw body of the request and our webhook secret key. So use the buffer function and passing the request. As a result from this function, we get the raw body of the request then retrieve the signature from the headers of the request. Finally, use Stripe to construct the event from the raw body converted to a string, pass the signature, and our Stripe webhook secret. If everything has been successfully processed, we should get an event and we can log that. Then we can add our business logic here. But first, we need to check that the event type is the one that we are waiting for. So in our example, we handle the checkout.session.completed event. If we receive such an event, we can add any business logic here. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to log a message to the console. But you can add any logic that you want here, such as sending an email to the customer. And if you receive any other event types, 
we just log a message to the console saying that we don't handle this type of event. And finally, we return a response to Stripe to acknowledge receipt of the event. And that's it for our webhook API endpoint. Now for the last step of this video, we're gonna create the success page that Stripe will use to redirect the user back to our application when he has successfully paid for its order. So inside a success.js file, I create a new React component called success and export it as default. Then if you remember, we include the session ID in the query parameter of the success URL. So we are retrieving it using the use router hook from next slash router. Then I'm just calling my custom React hook use shopping cart in order to get the function to clear the cart of the user. You can check out the source card of this hook in the description below. So once I have that, I perform a get request using the use SWR hook from the SWR package. And I'm passing the slash API slash checkout session with the session ID as the resource URL and a feature function, which is using Axios under the hood. Once I get that, I create a side effect using the use effect hook from React. And if I get some data, I just shoot some fireworks onto the screen and I clear the card. And finally, I return the UI of this page. So now we are done. We have our Next.js application fully integrated with Stripe so we can accept payment using the Stripe checkout page. So let's see that in action. So in my application, I'm just going to add a few items in my shopping cart. And finally, if I click to go to checkout, I'm redirected to the Stripe checkout page. Here on the left, I can see the total price of my order and all the line items of this order. So we have all the items, their quantities, and their price as well. And on the right, I can pay with my card. So I start with uh, entering my email address, my card information, my name, and then I can click pay. Once my payment has been successfully processed by Stripe, as you can see, I'm redirected to the success page of my application we just created. And we get the fireworks. All right. And if you go to your Stripe dashboard, you can see all your payments, the one that has been completed and the successful ones. And if you click on any of those payments, get all the details of this order, the line items, the payment details, and the payment method as well. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you so much and see you soon in the next video.